Amen. I'm thankful this morning that he is my rock, aren't you? I'm thankful to know, just like David said in the book of Psalms, he said he, he took me out of a horrible pit. He took me out of the miry clay, but he, here's what he done. He cleaned me up and he set me on a rock. And that rock is Christ, but he didn't stop. He said not only did he set me on a rock, but he put a new song in my mouth. I'm no longer singing the old world songs, but now I'm getting to sing Amazing Grace. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? I'm thankful to know this morning that I know a man who can. And I've been saved by this man, his man and this man's name is Jesus this morning. I was thinking as we were singing about I know a man who can about fixing a broken heart. My dad, I, I, I sure miss my dad. He's been gone now several years. But dad was a welder. He was a bullet maker. And I'd go with him, several jobs he'd go do, and he said, son, he said, I can weld anything. He said, but a broken heart. But let me tell you, I know a man who can. Yes. He can take a wayward heart, he can take a heart that's broken, and he can bring that heart, and he can put her back together again. But see, he doesn't just put it back together again. He, he can make it better than you. Yes. He can do much more than any heart surgeon can do here. See, they can just keep you going for a little while. But he gives you eternal life. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm thankful this morning for my dad. And I want to thank the dad this morning that's here today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a dad. Not only those that are natural dads, but those that are dads by maybe a stepdad. But yet takes those children and are a father to them. Hallelujah for those. And I'm going to ask you this morning, take your Bible and turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter number 15, Luke chapter number 15. And as you're turning, I want to ask you some questions. How many of us as parents has ever had a wayward child? Now, this wayward child doesn't necessarily have to be a son. It could be a son or a daughter. But they've gone wayward. They've left the house. Or, or maybe you or I could have been that wayward son or daughter. Maybe trying to go our own way and try to do our own thing and just try to, try to live life to our best ability and yet fell flat on our face. Wound up in the hog pen of life. And I want to tell you, folks, young people, adults, each and every, everybody, this has been the sound of my voice, this world, this society will not lead you only to the hog pen. It will not lead you to the Lord. That's right. But I want to tell you about a father. If there's a title to the message, and the title will be, the Father's compassion. You know, Brother Scott, what we need today is dads who loves. We need some fathers who loves God first and foremost. We need some fathers who loves their mother, the child's mother. Folks, dads, you need to love their mother. And then you need to love the children. And that, that's in order. You don't need to love the children more than you love the mother. You can have more children. You only got one wife. Well, that sounds cold. No, you need to love God. Then you need to love mom. Then you need to love the children. And we've got an example here in the Luke chapter number 15 about a father here. We, and, and, and we know the story. We won't read the whole story. But, but we're going to read parts of it here. And, and we want to look, about, look at this father's compassion, what he had for his son. And again, it could be a daughter just as well. It could be a son. It could be a daughter. It's, it's one that's, that's trying to go and trying to do things their way. Yeah. You see, that's what society would teach you. Do it your way. Society says, oh, just go out and have a good time. But folks, the only result of that is death. Death. And here in the book of Luke, we find this very familiar, familiar parable about a father. 
Here it says in verse number 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that follow to me. But don't you notice what the father done? And he divided unto them, not just one, but both, unto them his living. So we see here this dad, he, he, had, he had two sons and, and both. We're not going to talk about the sons a whole lot, but we need to open up with the sons a little bit. Both sons were far from the father. We had one son that had a bad case of the gimmies. We had the other son who had a bad case of bitterness. He was bitter. He was resentful to the father. But even though the father had given unto him his living just as well as he did the younger son. And we know the story about how the younger son went out and, and he spent his living. He spent all. And now he only got a third. The older son got two thirds. That's the way they did. The oldest got more than the youngest. And now he took whatever the father gave him, whatever amount that turned out to be. He took that and he wasted it. And the Bible says on righteous living. Wasted his father's living. And here this young son, and he, he's out, and he, he's a, uh, he said, give me, give me. And I know nobody's ever had that problem with their children, give me. Except me. And, I, and I'm just guessing you probably have too. Give me, give me, give me, give me. You know, we live in a society of give me today. We live in a society where we're teaching our children it's okay not to work. Somebody else will take care of you. Don't worry about working. Somebody else will pay your bills. No. The Bible says if you don't work, you won't eat. So we find here this son, he, 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 he was all puffed up in pride. Now, there's a problem with pride, by the way. Pride leads to not a fall, but destruction. You, you see all this thing of pride today. Have you have, Brother Scott mentioned the news, and, and you, you see it. It's in your face constantly. And it's all this pride, gay pride, homosexual pride, and all this other pride stuff. Folks, it's an abomination against God. So what this pride does, now I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to read this verse to you here. I don't want to try to, to, to just quote it. He said in Proverbs uh, 16 and 18, he said pride. Now here, you see all these things. You know what they're doing today, Brother Sammy? They're celebrating pride. you got the Dodgers in their stadium. they got these men dressed up like Catholic nuns, wearing makeup, a bunch of homosexuals, making fun of the Catholic religion. That ought not to be accepted. That ought not to be celebrated. That ought to be condemned in our society today. But here's what we got. We got the Dodgers having letting them have a day. Now here's what the Bible says. Pride goeth before destruction. You know what? That's going to happen one day. God is going to say enough of that. He's going to say that's it. You know how <laughs> Uh, I don't know if anybody else has ever been told this. I've had a belly full. Yeah. Now, my mom said that. She, she went ahead and expressed what she meant by that. Yeah. But she, she took the Board of Education and she applied it to my seat of knowledge. Yeah. Repeatedly. Yeah. Yeah. Until it sunk in. Yeah. But God says, pride goeth before destruction. And then he said a haughty spirit before a fall. And both of these boys, they had pride in their life. They had a haughty spirit. The younger, he, he wanted to go and spend the money. The, 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 here, here's the oldest son, just real quick. He was obediently disobedient. Well, how can you be that? Here's what he's going to do. Here's the, the, the oldest son went and done what the father said, but he hated every second of it. He resented the father. Even though the father had given him what was due him, he still, it wasn't enough to make him satisfied. So we see here, you've got the younger. 
going spending the living. And he's going out and he's just he's just living it up. Having a good time. Having a great time. And just as just as in society today, folks, you know what society do? They'll help you spend your money. That's right. All them buddies that you've got that's hanging around you that likes that beer, that likes that alcohol, that likes those cigarettes. You know, you ever notice they'll bum cigarettes off of you? They won't buy their own. That's a good reason to stop smoking just in itself. Make them stop. They will suck the life out of you. Society will. And that's what's going on with this young man. He started out with a pocket full of money, and where did he end up? He ended up in the hog pen. Trying to eat with a hog. That's, you know, can I tell you something about the hogs? Just real quick. They care nothing for you. They only want what you give them. They don't care. And that is this world today, young people. They don't care about you. They just want what you've got. The Bible says don't cast your pearls among the swine. Young ladies, young men, stay pure. Amen. Stay pure. But here you got this young man. He was he was done spit it all, and and he's in a mess, and he's in the hog pen. And you know, have you ever been in a hog pen? Most people around here grew up with hog pens, and you had to get in the hog pen to slop the hogs. And I'm not trying to be gross here, and I'm not trying to be uh, too bad here. But you can't get in the hog pen without getting the hog pen on you. It's just impossible because they're nasty. And here's this young man. Don't you notice verse 17, though? And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? In other words, they've got leftovers. They've got more bread than they can eat, brother mine. They're filled and satisfied, and they've got leftovers. <laughs> Can I say we're spoiled? What do you mean, preacher? How many of us throw away our leftovers because we get tired of eating them? This boy didn't have a thing. He was eating with the hogs. And he said, my father's servants, they've got, they've got leftovers. And here I am. I'm, here's the hog pen. I've got, I've got this mess all over me. I'm starving to death. I'm in a mess. I'm broke. I'm, I've been beaten. I'm sorrowful. My clothes are tattered. Today we wear torn clothes for some odd reason. Mom would put patches on them. But we wear them today, and here this young man, he was torn. He was tattered. And he said he came to himself. And what that means is he began to think about where he's at. You know what that is? That's conviction of the Father coming upon you and I. He's convinced us of our sin. He's convicted us of where we're at. And he's told us where we're at. And now we're finally coming to ourselves. We're thinking about where we're at. We're contemplating on what the Father said. <laughs> and he says, and he came to himself and said, How many hired servants of my Father have bread enough to eat and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Here I am in the hog pen. I'm dying here, and my father's got leftovers. I'll just go eat them leftovers. Yeah. But don't you notice something here about the father? You see, the father, he had compassion. He had a love for his sons. You know, you know what? They're still going to be your sons. They're still going to be your daughters. No matter what may befall. Now, folks, don't ever get so haughty. And so high-minded to think your children or my children will never fall into sin. That's right. Because it can happen. That's right. It can happen. It can happen in a moment, and they not realize it. And here, here's Dad. He, he, he's waiting for the son. He's been looking for the son. And, and here's the son. Now he's the son began to think about the dad, the father. And what's at the father's house over here? 
Over there, you got the hogs. But over here, you got the Father's provisions. You got a place to stay. You got a bed to sleep in. You got covers to cover you up when it's cold. You got food to eat. You got a dry place to sleep. But over there, all you got is the hogs and them rooting and a grunting and, a ma and a just making those pig noises. But over here, you got the Father's house. And I've got good news for you. He don't have cable TV, but what he's got is the Word of God. Yeah. He's got the word of God. And here, what happens is, he, he said, I come to myself, and he said, I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my father. He said, I'm going to tell my father I'm sorry. I've sinned. I've sinned against God, and I've sinned against you, and I'm going to go. While well, the whole time, the father has never gave up on the son. If you've got a wayward child this morning, if you've got a child in sin, if you've got a child that's out there, if your child has left home for some reason or another, I want to tell you something, Mom. I want to tell you something, Dad. Don't give up on that child. I'm not telling you you've got to agree with that child. I'm just telling you don't give up on that child. You ain't got to go and, 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 and you, the father here, we'll get to that here in just a second, but I want to go ahead and say this. The father never relaxed his conviction. He never said, well, it's okay. He never said, it'll be all right. He never said, oh, you, it's a, you just, you, he said, you're just a boy. See, there's no excuse for sin. The father never lessened. He never lowered his conviction. He, the father stood on the word of God. He never, he never, be, he didn't move a bit. You know what we need? We need some dads with backbones. We need some fathers that'll say, no, you cannot go. Now, does that mean they won't go? No, that mean they could sneak out and go. But I want to tell you what, there are consequences to sin. And here this young man, here he is in the hog pen. Here he is just a, you know, that's his only buddies he had now because he had no money. His only friends was the pigs. Yeah. Rooting and a grunting. Snorting around. While the father had provisions at home. But don't you notice here. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet... A great way off. Now here, we're going to look at the father. When he, is a great, when he was a great way off, his father saw. You know what? Can anybody, have you ever seen anything without looking? Has anybody ever been able to see anything without looking for it? No, if you're going to see something, you've got to look for it. Have you ever been driving down the road and somebody say, well, did you see that? No, I wasn't looking. You cannot see without looking. And here we've got the father who was looking and he saw. He said he saw him and had compassion and ran. Now notice what he did. He said he ran. He ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He kissed him. So we see this father. The whole time, Brother Sam, he never gave up. He never gave in. But he never gave up. We've got this father who's been looking for the son. He's been, he, here's the son. He's in the hog pen. Now the son began to thinking about the father. While the father was over here, the father was looking for the son. Kind of reminds me of a song I was reminded about last night. We went and listened to Mac Powell sing. He started singing a Fleetwood Mac song. Most of us is old enough to remember them. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Now, how does that go with the sermon? I'm going to tell you this. This young man, when, he, when conviction began to set upon him, when he began to think about himself, think about his condition, you know what he was doing? He could not stop thinking about his father's house. He could not stop thinking about home. He couldn't stop. You know why? He said, thank God yesterday's gone. This is the hog pen. Here's yesterday, but I'm starting a new life. I'm going to the father's house. 
And the father saw him coming, Brother David. He said, in a great way off. You know what? That, again, that song, he said, I can't stop thinking about the son. I can't stop thinking about his condition. I can't stop thinking about and worried about what's going on. Where is he at? Is he, is he safe? Folks, have you ever had, you ever had that problem? Worried about your children? Where they're at? Are they safe? Are they okay? See, the father loved the son. And he saw him. He saw him. He, he, was, he was coming from a, a far way off. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe the son, Brother Sammy, maybe the son, he began to sing, Canaan land, I thought, I told Brother Scott this in the, in the choir, maybe he started saying, Canaan land is just in sight because as he is walking, he is getting closer to the father's house. And the father saw him coming. You know, I don't believe the father had to say, who is that? I don't think the father, even though, let me tell you how that son looked. He was dirty. He was a mess. He was in a condition, hey, he was in a whole lot worse condition. When he left the house, he was fat and sassy. Had a pocket full of money and friends just running overboard. But now, they've all left him. You see, kids, people, everybody. Your friends will hang around in the good times. You let a little trouble hit, you'll find out who your friends are. You let just a little bit of trouble hit, you'll get the blame for the trouble. See, they're really not friends, they're leeches. They're just there to suck the life out of you. A true friend. You see, that's Christ Jesus. He said he's a true friend. And he sticks closer than a brother. And we find here that this young man, he came to himself and he's going home. Maybe he, he's being driven here. By what? Well, he's starving to death. He's hungry. He's driven by his memories of the home, of what the father had at the house. And now he's going home. But can I say this condition that he's in, he's, he's dirty. He's rejected. He's been beaten. He said, no man. No man would give unto him. And he's broke. He don't have a penny to his name now. And carrying a load of shame of what happened. Can I say shame is a heavy burden to bear? Shame. Folks, shame. And it's a burden you don't have to bear. It's something that you don't have to carry. What do you mean? Give it to the Father and let the Father carry it. And I'm not talking about a earthly Father. I'm talking about the Heavenly Father. We can give Him our shame. We can give Him our filth. We can get, folks, we need to give Him ourselves. Paul says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord. So we find here this, this father here. He was looking for the son, and he saw the son coming, and he had compassion on him. Didn't, it, what, didn't that what it said, that the father saw him and he had compassion? In other words, he had pity. Pity and compassion is the same thing. It didn't mean he said what you done was good. No. He let... The word convicted. You see, he didn't go to the sun. You see, he could have went. Folks, you can go to those, those places your children are, and you can drag them out kicking and screaming. You can grab them by the hair of the head, and you can drag them out of them places, and they'll go right back to the hog pen. Unless the Lord does the work. Let the Lord do the work. And that's what the Father was doing. He was letting the Lord do the work. And he was watching for the Lord to work. He was watching for the Son to come. <laughs> and let me tell you, he, wasn't, he, was not, he was not disappointed. I'd say the Father was there every morning, every noon, and every night looking for the Son. Looking for the Son. And there he was. He's coming. Uh, my, you know what? You know, have you ever done something? Have you ever done something you was ashamed of? Worried about going home. Wondering how 
mom and dad might react to what you've done. I've been there. I'm sure you have too. Can you imagine this young man? The father here is looking for him. The father's waiting on him, but he didn't know that. He just knew in the father's house there was provision. He was doubtful. What, reckon dad, what would dad, would dad just tell me to leave and never come back? Is he going to tell me I'm no longer his son? He's roped me off. I've been no good. Can I say the father saw him? And he knew who he was and he had, he said the Bible says he had compassion on him. He, in other words, the father's love. And, and he said, he, here's what he did. He didn't wait for the son to come to him. He said, the Bible said, and he ran. Yeah. Well, what's unusual about that? Well, that was very unusual in that day. No self-respecting Jew is going to run. No self-respecting uh, 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 man that's going to, he's not going to run in public. Not going to happen. But here's the dad. Dad didn't care who saw him. What he had to do, he had to, he had, you know. Now, folks, they didn't have britches like we had. They had these tunics and all these other things. He, he had to hock his tunic up, tuck it down in his belt. He had to expose his legs to run. That was shameful. But the father did. Why? Because a wayward son was coming home. A wayward son was coming back to the father's house. And this father, he said he had compassion and he saw him a great way off. And you know what the father, the father never stopped looking for the son. Parents, don't ever stop looking. And if you're here this morning, and you're one of them wayward children. You're one of those. Well, you see, you might be like that older son. You might be obediently disobedient. You need to think about the father. You need to think about him. Think about yourself. Think about the father. Uh, let me say there's freedom in the father. There's freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, don't get that root of bitterness in your heart. So he said he had compassion. He pitied him. You know what he did, Brother Sammy? He saw his condition. Yeah. He knew how he lived. He saw him leaving. He saw him leaving. Had on fine clothes. He might have had a suit on. Had a high step in his step. He's going to go see the world. He's going to go see the world, and he's just going to experience wonderful things. But the Bible says the pleasure of sin is just for a season. He said, yeah, there's fun. Yes, there's fun in sin, but there's payment of sin. And he saw him leave. He was all dressed up, clean, just had a bath, might have even shaved. I don't know. He might even smell good, Brother David. He might even put on some of that there aftershave. But I can guarantee you this, he didn't smell good when he came home. It wasn't aftershave he was wearing. And the father saw his condition. He saw those fine clothes that he had on when he left was now tattered and ragged. He saw that that maybe that face that was 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 we call clean shaven. He, he might have he might have looked a little scraggly. He didn't look the same. He ain't been eating. You know how to lose weight? Quit eating. Yeah. But you can't quit eating because you'll die if you don't eat. You know how it sounds. He couldn't eat. He was in the hospital. There's no telling what he really looked like coming home. But the father saw him and he ran. And what did he do when he got there? He said he kissed him. He, now, I don't think it was just one kiss. I think he probably put a lot of smooches on him. Now, that's his son there. There's nothing. There, don't try to take and try to make this some kind of prideful thing. It's not. It's a father loving on his son. Folks, let me tell you something, dads. Let me tell you something, fathers. Hey, it, it's a true dad that a kisses children. You know how to keep your children out of a lot of trouble? Especially immoral trouble in today's society. Fathers, we need to show our children some affection. 
I love what Adrian Rogers said. You need to give your kids some hugs and lots of them. Because if you don't, the world will. And it'll be the wrong kind of hugs and kisses. The wrong kind. And here the father was. He was kissing on his son. Now those kisses didn't mean just, oh, welcome home. They were kisses of reconciliation. At one time was all lost without God. Needed to be reconciled unto him. Aren't you glad he reconciled us? He reconciled us. And he said he ran. He fell on his neck. He kissed him. Even though <laughs> he smelled like a pig. He looked like he'd been with the pigs. He looked like he'd been in the world. But the father. You know what we need to do as dads? As dads, sometimes our children, we need to look past the dirt and find our children and get them cleaned up. Aren't you glad God, God looked at me and he looked past that filth. He looked past that dirt. He looked past those things that I was in. He looked past all that and he said, I'll take him anyway. Hallelujah. So he said, he said these kisses and all that. He, he said he, 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 wants to, he, he wants to reconcile. And in verse 21, you've got the, they've got the son. You know what he does? The son, the son began to confess to the father. He said, Father, I sinned. I sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you. I'm now no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me one of your servants. Dad, I'll just come serve you. You know what the Father wants out of you and I? He says, if we, what? Confess our sins. He's what? Faithful in what? To do what? Forgive us. Now, he didn't stop there. And to do what? Cleanse us of what? All unrighteousness. Son begin to confess. The father begin to say, hey, something's going on here. God begin to deal with this young man. God begin to do something in the heart of this young man. You know what he done here? He said in Proverbs, he says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it, right? Now, folks, I want to tell you something. That's a proverb. That's not a promise. That's what Adrian, I love Adrian Rogers. He said, that's a proverb. And not a promise. So you can't say, well, I've trained them up right, and now if they get in a mess, they'll come home. Not necessarily. It doesn't mean they'll all come home. But I want to tell you something this. Let me tell you something. One has a better chance of coming home that's been trained up in the right way than one that's not been trained at all. That's right. you not give any, if you don't give your children any kind of training at all, this world is going to kill them. But if you might train that child up, hey, there's a possibility, just as is a young man, that he's going to come home. And now he's home. He's confessing to the father. But the father said unto his servants. I want you to notice something here about the father. You know what the father didn't do? Now, I know we'd, have, we'd, we'd probably done this. He told the servants, he said, go bring him a robe. Put a ring on his finger. Put shoes. You know what? He, he probably left with some fine boots. He probably had a good set of Rockies or something like that. And now when he got home, he was barefooted. Put some shoes on his feet. You know what the father didn't do? I told you you'd end up this way. I told you you'd get down there and they would take everything you've got and now you come crawling back to me because you've lost everything. No, the father didn't say that. Now, did the son know that? The son knew that. He's a, you think that son hadn't been wrestling with that from the time he left the hog pen till the time he got to the father's house? No, that, uh, that had already been beating that son all to pieces. And the father knew it. He didn't say, son. Now, nobody else has ever been told this but me. I told you. Yeah. I, I hated that. 
You know why? Because they was always right. They was always right. But can I tell you something today? God loves you. The Father loves you. And you know what the Father wants from you? He wants a relationship. Just as with a father and son relationship, he wants a relationship with you and I. He says, hey, he said, there, he said, son, he said, no. He said, servant, go get the robe. We're going to change his clothes. Put a ring on his finger. We're going to show that he's one of mine. He belongs in this house. And no, no, the servants, they, wear, they don't wear shoes. They go barefooted. But son, you're going to have some shoes. You know what? Did that son deserve any of that? Absolutely not. But he got it anyway. Can you say that's the grace and mercy of the Father? Can you say, hey, folks, I thank God every day that I receive the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't deserve anything, but he gives it to me. He said, oh, he said, bring the best robe. Again, that's a position of a son, not a servant. Give him a ring. What did that ring represent to the son? That represented authority of the father. And again, he said, give him some shoes. Only the son. Only the children wore shoes. Not the servant. Now, don't you notice a couple other things here? The father gave two reasons. Two reasons why they ought to be rejoicing over this son. And he even told the eldest son this. He said, here, here's why we need to rejoice. I want you to notice verse 23. And he says, and bring forth, he said, bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead. He said, he's dead. And is alive. Can I say, we were all dead at one time and made alive in Christ Jesus. He said, he's dead. He said, now he's alive. He is lost, but now he's found. Look, we need to rejoice over the son coming home. You see, this father had some compassion. Now, he didn't, he didn't agree with the sin, but he loved his son. He let God. God dealt with this young man. This young man come home. We need to let God. Fathers, men, you need to love God. You need to show your children you love God. Well, how do you show your children you love God? Show your children in your prayer. Speak to your children about the Father. Hey, just show them that you love God. Be the man of God that you ought to be. And dads, love their mother. It's not a choice. Well, it is a choice. Let me rephrase it. It is a choice to love their mother. You can choose not to, or you can choose to. But since they're their mother, you need to love, oh, you need to be a man and love their mother. Yeah. Make things work. You can do it. And then, fathers, you take your children and you love your children. You see, you're the protector of the home. You're the protector of the children. You are not to let those children do as they please. You know why? They'll get hurt. I do that a lot I don't, with my grandsons. I, I, I let them go up to a point before they get hurt. Sometimes, you, have you ever tried to tell somebody over and over and over and over again? And finally, say, well, go ahead and try it your way. Yeah. And then I have to stop them before they get hurt. But folks, we need to love men. We need to love our children. Yeah. Love your children. Love God. Love their mother. Love the children. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask Gail to come, David to come. The father said, for this is my son who was dead. Paul said in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, he said, for the wages of sin is death. 
but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He said, this is my son who is lost and is now found. Luke 19.10 says this, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. If you're here this morning, you're a wayward son or a daughter or, or, or can I say go back to the Father's house? Would you go back to the Father's house? Reconcile with the Father and the mother. And if you're, if you're here this morning and you've got wayward children, don't give up. Don't agree with the sin that they're in, but don't give up on your children. Pray for your children. Love your children. They're your children. You ought to love them. If there's a need this morning, would you come?